year in Overmesto. And away they go. Well, a good clean start. And 27 teams now heading out round uh, what is a 2 by 6 kilometer race for the women and 2 by 7.5 for the men. It's only the second mixed relay we've had this season. Uh, still not that many on the on the uh, schedule, but if, if it proves a major success here tonight, I think uh, in future years we're going to see it a regular, regular inclusion. Oh, it is, and especially with the Olympics next year, where it is included in the Olympic program for the first time and teams are taking this race and the athletes are taking this race very seriously indeed and it's going, it's going to be pushing the limits from gun to the finish line is that Germany just no it's not it's the local team well I don't think uh, there's any surprise to see the Czech Republic going off fast Veronica Vitkova uh, in fact Vitkova and Sokolova the two women look very steady in training Mike uh, we saw them doing some standing shooting earlier on Look, I know they weren't uh, pushing the pace. They didn't have a high pulse rate, but their technique looked good. You thought they looked a little bit nervous. I did, and uh, when the coach threw a box of ammunition to uh, Yaroslav Sukup, uh, he dropped that and some of the bullets fell out in the snow. I just felt there was a bit of tension, and, and there has to be a lot of pressure on the local team. <laughs> Well, in the floodlight, it uh, went dark at just about five past five. Um, so most of the zeroing, most of the training was done uh, in daylight. But now, obviously, it's uh, full floodlights. That, that could well be a factor. They're all used to knowing exactly what the effect is. But there's always a little bit of sort of angst amongst the, the first runners, Mike, because they're, they're not quite sure, particularly in the prone, prone position. I'd agree with that. And the wind, well, well since we came up here about a couple of hours ago, the wind has always been very gently from the left. And it's actually dropped off a little bit now on the left of range, that's positions 15 to 30, slightly stronger to the right of the range where the bigger name teams are or the favourites are. It's, it just really is just no wind at all. Well, Tora Berger has gone to the front and she's the one now pushing the pace. She's not split the pack as yet, but I think she'll have a few of these athletes skiing well out of their comfort zone. But uh, difficult one to call. The British athletes uh, wearing bib number, just check that one up, 26, I think it was. And uh, going through, taking the first leg, Amanda Lightfoot, who's very capable, but she does need to shoot well if she's going to stay with the pace after the first shoot. If she can shoot five with five on the first shoot, Mike, she might find herself in the, with the mix somewhere around 10th, 15th position, and that would be excellent. That would be excellent. Uh, she has had some health issues, uh, poor Amanda. She's only what lightly raced this season. And just last week in Rupe holding the British Championships, thankfully, have uh, given her a chance to get her form back a little. And I hope that she can uh, show us some of the magic. She was 36th in the sprint last year in Rupe holding at the World Championships. She really is capable. I noticed that a lot of the teams have put their their best athlete or their best uh, female on the second leg. Norway have very much gone for their favourite on the first. What, what do you think the thinking is here? Just to make sure that they're still in contention after the first leg? Or is uh, Torreberg going to try and break clear and force mistakes uh, from uh, some of the other athletes? I was thinking that through as well, but I, I believe they've taken Solimdal off the start, put Berger on the start, because Tora Berger, we know she's got the pace, and I think, more importantly, she's got the speed on the range when it comes to shooting. She really is the fastest. And I think the Norwegians want to get a psychological advantage early on in this one. And Solemdal, with respect, well, she's a 74 and a seven, 74 in the prone and a 77% average hit rate in the standing. So it's a safe, a safe by athlete first. And Tora Berger is destroying them back into the, into the stadium. Well, she needs to be uh, just a little bit careful as uh, <laughs> she comes in because, of course, if she's working hard, she increases the risk that she might miss targets. But she is one athlete who seems to shoot well under all conditions, and she's immensely confident after the way the season has gone for her so far. Remember, she is the world number one, leading the way into the stadium for the first shoot. The first two-kilometer loop just about completed. So we've got the Czech Republic and Russia just behind Norway. Germany in fourth position at the moment, well positioned. Austria in five, and just behind them, Team 12, which is Belarus, who are 
have moved up through the rankings very well on that first lap, all the way down to the far end. They take the lane that corresponds with their bib number. There is uh, Espen Anderson, the Norwegian uh, coach. He looked a little nervous there. I wonder if he's thinking, has Tora gone too hard? Well, she knows what she's doing, surely. Now, not only does she ski fast, she shoots fast as well. So, Russia nearest the camera. First target down for Norway. The Czech Republic get the first two down, and the crowd responding to that, but number three goes wide. That could be a bad mistake. No mistake from Berger. France go clear, as you would expect. Good shooting from Marie-Laura Brunet. Uh, Italy with Dorothy Vera have done exceptionally well, and the Ukraine with Julia Gizma are going to find themselves well up with the leaders as they head out of the stadium for the first time. So, Russia a getaway clear as well. Zaitseva looking very strong, Mike. Zaitseva, Vilikina, Shapulin, Milishko. It's a strong Russian squad that could well take the top prize here today. And they were number one because they did win in Ostersund the very first race of the season. Yes, the Russian team is, is such a powerful team. And uh, well, there's Amanda Lightfoot, uh, only two spares. The local team, the Czech Republic, only using two spares. Or should I say using two spares and lost somewhat 15, 20 seconds in the process. Well, I had a look through the results of the last few years, and in fact, this has only really been part of the World Championship since 2007, and only one team has won this mixed relay, having done a penalty loop. And those of you who were with us in uh, Rupolding last year will know that that's the Norwegians. They missed uh, 12 shots in all, incurred one penalty loop, but in the four, five other uh, World Championship mixed relays, no team has done a penalty loop. And uh, the average number of misses is six or seven for the win, about six and a half, the average. So to miss two on your very first shoot could, uh, could prove expensive. Well, the athletes that live in Torsby and in other places in Scandinavia where they ski in tunnels uh, pretty much throughout <laughs> the summer, they'll uh, certainly be used to that sensation. And the Finnish team, of course, the first of the snow tunnels was uh, created in Finland. And uh, Maka right now, Lauken in uh, ninth position. That's a good start for the Finnish team. Only 9.7 seconds down after the first shoot. So Finland absolutely in the running. Well, the, the only major surprise that I can see, Mike, is that Germany have not managed to stay with the leaders. And uh, Andrea Henkel dropping all the way down to 14th position. She's only 14 seconds off the pace. I think Andrea Henkel will work pretty hard on this second 2K to get back in touch. But Tora Berger's not going to give them... Uh, any slack whatsoever. Brunei starting to struggle with the pace. It's been a familiar story. We thought that Thierry Doucet might have been able to do something with them over the last 17 days, Mike. But again, the signs are there that the French shoot brilliantly, but just can't stay with the pace of the, of the top team. I agree, but I think this is better from a Brunei. We saw her not even able to stay with Tora Berger for two kilometers previously, prior to Christmas, after Christmas. And uh, Zaitseva is looking as strong as we've seen her all season. She's got that spark, that dynamic kick as she transfers her weight. Vitkova down, uh, down the order now. I think uh, that will have taken a little bit of pressure off her. Did see Annalise Cook of USA going through. She's wearing number 17. And the Americans with Dunkley, Bailey and Nordgrim. Not perhaps the team selection that you'd have expected from the Americans. But uh, they'll certainly be hoping to do better than 17th, which is their ranking after just one mixed relay this season. The Austrians, Mike, uh, their problem in the past, in fact, they haven't usually entered a team because they haven't had two women uh, in the team. But they do this year, and Schwabel and Schrempf take legs one and two. Eberhardt and Landertinger on legs three and four. It's, it's not. when you Eber, Eberhardt, of course, he showed us that he has the top ten, in fact, the top three ski times in some of the ten-kilometer sprints he's been entered to this year. But I don't think this is the strongest possible, certainly on the male side, the strongest Austrian team. This is Christina Palker, or it was Christina Palker on your screens with the uh, white and red. Team number 40, Wiston, will be taking over from her. She's uh, done very well. She's only some 25 metres down on Tora Berger at the moment. Berger had, uh, what did she have, three and a half seconds over Dorothy Vera of Italy. She's taken more out of her on this uh, lap. 
And there you see Annalise Cook in sixth place for the USA at the moment. Very good start from them, just behind Slovakia and Gorekova. We've got Laukonen of Finland. Now, the Finns uh, haven't done too badly. They've had two top tens in the last couple of uh, runnings of the World Championship mixed relay. And it would be nice to see them come back into the picture. It's so tight, though. Uh, right now, Patrick, we've got, uh, well, the first ten teams. There's only 17 seconds separating them. So, quite honestly, that's hand-feeding one spare round. So... There's nothing in it. Henkel is 18 seconds down. She's in 11th position for Germany. So in come the two leading teams. And Norway and Russia have taken uh, a little bit of time out of the pack. That uh, may get, give them the advantage if they can both shoot five with five. That gap of some 25 metres could certainly double, if not treble, over the uh, next minute or so. Because Tora Berger shoots incredibly quickly. And I just get a feeling that Olga Zeitsaver will try and match her in this, uh, on this uh, second shoot. The first in the stand position. Have a look at this stadium. It's absolutely jam-packed. When we came first thing this morning, we thought there is no way they're going to get enough spectators to fill it. But uh, we've been proved wrong on the very first night of the championship. So uh, fantastic news for the organisation. Here we go. Shoot two, leg number one, Tora Berger of Norway up against Olga Zaitseva of Russia. A little surprise, Zaitseva got into the final position before firing before Tora Berger. Zaitseva oh. missed that middle shot. That Tor is fantastic. Oh. Tora Berger took about 0.3 of a second between shots four and five. Both of them go down, and so she gets away first. Poland could be on the chase. One miss for Olga Zaitseva, but she reloaded and uh, got that last target down very quickly indeed. Normally it would take some seven and a half, eight seconds to use a spare round, but she was considerably quicker than that. The Czech Republic clear all five, and there's a cheer from the crowd. Veronika Vitkova has done well. Lots and lots of pressure on the host nation, particularly, Mike, because they did so dreadfully in the World Cup here last year. They did last year, but, uh, of course, in uh, Ostersund, the first of the mixed relay trials, I think it surprised everybody when they came third, so there's a nervous expectation from the, from the 17,000 spectators in this stadium, and I think from the team itself. Annalise Cook for USA. Struggling uh, a little. Two misses for the British team. Amanda Lightfoot certainly needs to clear those two targets with the next two rounds. A penalty loop at this stage would be absolutely dire in terms of staying with... Uh, not in terms of staying with the leaders, but in terms of staying with, with the teams that are expected to come in between 15 and 20. Yeah, I'm pleased to say Amanda has got them down. She did get those two, two of the three spare rounds. Well, Tora Berger hasn't lost any of her panache. It, it does make you wonder, should you save Tora Berger for the second leg? But, well, this is obviously the strategy from Anderson. He's decided that he wants to get Solendal out in front. And, uh, of course, she skis fast, but then is she under more pressure? Being but out in front. Every which way there is pressure, but being out in front, you've got, you've got a little more to lose than you have to uh, when you're chasing somebody. I think if Tora Berger had finished fourth or fifth on this first leg, it would be fair to say the Norwegians have made a mistake. But she's been played, she's a trump card, she's been played early on, and she's done very good work indeed. She hasn't managed.